Hi everybody and welcome to this tutorial about TouchSim. I'm Giulia Querniani from the Active Touch Laboratory at the University of Sheffield and today I will give you a brief but hopefully complete overview about this tool. The content of this tutorial will cover these three questions. First of all, we will see what is TouchSim and why it was built. Then we will look inside TouchSim to understand a little how it was built and to give a brief idea of the modeling process. And finally, we will use a Jupyter notebook to learn the basis and to actually start using TouchSim. So let's start with the first question. What is TouchSim? From the name, I'm sure you can have a first hint. It is something about touch and also has something to do with simulation. And I have to say, this is correct. Indeed, TouchSim is a model to simulate the spiking response of the human tactile afferents. So the next question would be, why do we need this kind of simulator? I will answer you in a moment, but before, just to make sure that we are all on the same page, let me give you a short overview about human tactile afferents and their spiking response. So, the skin is our largest sensory organ and it is innervated by tactile afferent fibers which are responsible to carry information about any tactile event to the spinal cord and then onto the brain. As you can see from this figure, the tactile innervation is different for the glabrous skin, which is the skin covering the palm of our hands and the sole of the feet, and for the hairy skin, which covers the rest of our body. Our focus for today is on the innervation of the glabrous skin. Here, the tactile afferents terminate in four different end organs, the mechanoreceptors. The mechanoreceptors lay in deep layers of the skin and are responsible for translating the mechanical deformation of the skin resulting from any tactile interaction into spike trains, which are signals carrying the tactile information through the afferents up to the brain. The four different mechanoreceptors you can see illustrated here are coupled with four different afferent types. We have the slowly adapting type 1 and type 2 afferents and the rapidly adapting type 1 and type 2 afferents. The four classes differentiate for their different electrophysiological response properties. Indeed, the slowly adapting units respond to static and sustained indentation into the skin, while rapidly adapting units respond to transitory and dynamic stimuli. Also, as you can clearly see from this figure, rapidly adapting units mostly respond at the onset and offset of the stimulus. The difference between type 1 and type 2 units regard the difference in receptive fields. Type 1 units have small and well-defined receptive fields, while for type 2 units the receptive fields are large and with unclear borders. Now that we are clarified what we are speaking about, let's go on with the next question. Why do we need to simulate the spike in response of tactile afferents? Well, there are several reasons. The most important one is that currently, in vivo records of the tactile afferents are challenging and present some limitations. They can get responses only from a single fiber at a time, and also we can't use these recording techniques into the wild, meaning that we can see the response to natural and realistic interac tactile interaction, but we can only record the responses to artificial stimuli in lab environment. In this context, TouchSim allows us to study the, the response of the whole population of afferents to arbitrary stimuli, and for this reason it is a very powerful tool in several areas, from the characterization of tactile afferents in neuroscience to the design of uh, biomimetic feedback for neuroprosthetics applications. We already arrived to the second part of this tutorial, here we will see what is inside TouchSim. I won't go too much into details, but I will give you just an overview of the main components of the model. If you want to know more, please refer to the paper cited here below or drop me a question at the end of the tutorial. First of all, we need to decide the population of afferents of which we want to simulate the activity. 
TouchSim covers three types of offerings, slowly adapting type 1, rapidly adapting type 1, and Pacinian or rapidly adapting type 2 offerings. The population can have arbitrary size, arbitrary composition, and can be distributed over whichever surface. By default, TouchSim offers the, the possibility of simulating the population of the human hand, thus respecting the size and the distribution of afferents found in the human hand. The second step is to design the stimulus we want to apply. The stimulus can be of any shape and any size, and in addition, its dynamic shapes has to be defined. In other words, we need to define how the stimulus is indented into the skin over time. Next, we have what is a black box for the TouchSim user, meaning that this is really what is inside TouchSim, and if you will just use the tool to generate the spike response, you won't see anything of what happened in these phases. First of all, we have a mechanical model of the skin which computes how the deformation of the skin caused by the stimulus is propagated from the stimulus side to all the surface considered. The mechanics models relies on two parts. First, modeling the distribution of stresses using a quasi-static elastic model, and secondly, modeling the dynamic pressures and the surface wave propagation. Finally, we have the actual spiking model. Here, the output of the, spike of the skin mechanics at all the receptor location is fed into the integrate and fire models that generate spiking response for each afferent. In particular, the spiking responses are determined by leaky integrate and fire models using different set of up to 13 parameters, which are different for individual SA1, array, and PC afferents. To fit these parameters and also to validate this model, Peripheral spiking data from monkeys were used. These spiking data were obtained in response to a wide range of stimuli. Finally, the output of the model is the sp spike train of each afferent in the population in response to the stimulus applied. The match between simulated and measured response was found to be nearly, nearly perfect, down to the millisecond spike timing. And that's why I can say that TouchSim is a really powerful tool. And here we are at part three. Now you know almost everything about TouchSim and it is time to understand how to actually use it. TouchSim is implemented in Python and you can download it from this GitHub repository. In the same repository, you will also find the instruction on how to install it, which I also reported briefly here. For now, you don't need to install a local version of TouchSim, but in this tutorial, we will use an online modebook. So if you scroll a little down in the GitHub page of TouchSim, you will find a My Binder page. Click on it and let's start using TouchSim. Welcome to the third part of this tutorial, where we will actually learn how to use TouchSim. Let's start by importing all the libraries and packages that we will need. Notice that we import TouchSim as TS and that we also import the inbuilt plotting function here. That's because going down to the first block, we can use the plot function to visualize the outline of the hand, which is the surface over which we will distribute our afferents. I also plotted here the coordinates just to show you that the origin of the axis on the hand surface is located on the fingertip of the digit 2. Here I can also add tags equal true and in this way I can visualize the tags or the, the name of all the region which compose our hand. Also here adding region equal, let's say, D2. I can visualize just the digit 2 with all the components of this digit 2.
Now we want to generate individual afferent and population of afferent. Let's start by creating a single afferent and in particular an afferent object. This is done by using the ts.afferent function and here I am creating an SA1 afferent. I am placing it on the hand surface and without further specifying the location, it will be placed at the center of the fingertip of digit 2. Using the plot function here, you can clearly see what I just created. I can create a friend of type PC, array or SA1. In this case, I'm creating a PC afferent, and this time I want to place it, it on the fingertip of digit 3. So I have to specify the location, which will be the center of the fingertip of digit 3. Again, using the plot function, I can visualize what I just created. If now I want to combine these two afferents I just created and create a population of afferent, it is really simple. I just need to use the plus symbol and combine A1 and A2, which were the two single afferents. A will be an afferent population object. If I want to get some basic information about this population, I can use the print function. And here I get some basic information as the number of afferent of which the population is composed and the type of these afferents. Instead of creating single afferents and then combining them, I can also use some inbuilt function of TouchSim. And in particular, if I want to reproduce exactly the population of the human hand, I can use the function ts.afpop underscore hand. And in this way, I will create exactly the population I can find on the human hand with the same number of afferent and the same distribution. I can also decide to create just the population of one digit or to limit the population to just one class. As here, for example, I want just the population with array afferents. Another uh, parameter I can pass is density multiplier. In this case, I decrease the number of afferents. So, in the population of afferents found in the human hand, there are approximately 13,000 afferents. So dealing with a population with this number can be computationally heavy. So it is a good idea to decrease the density in this way. Here again, I use the plot function to visualize the three different population I just created. After generating the population of afferent, now we want to design the stimulus. To design a stimulus, we need two basic parameters. The location where we want to apply the stimulus, and in this case it will be the origin of the axis, and the trace, so how the skin is indented over time. In this case, it is a sinusoidal wave. Then passing these two parameters to the function ts.stimulus, I am creating a stimulus object, which I can visualize using the function plot here. In this case, I'm just indenting one single pin into the skin following this trace. In TouchSim, there are several inbuilt functions to create different trace for the stimulus. For example, ramp, a ramp indentation, a sinusoidal wave, and so on. All these functions can be personalized with a lot of parameters, and I suggest you to use question mark and then the name of the function you want to use, for example, in this case, let's say the ramp. And in this way, I can obtain some basic documentation about this function with all the argument I can pass to personalize uh, the trace. As I was saying here, well, first of all, here you can see the visualization of all the shape I created. And as I was saying, with this function, I just I'm just indenting one single pin into the skin following this trace. If I want to combine more pins and create a shape to indent into the skin, I can do this using the function steam indent shapes. I need to pass to as argument the shape I want to indent, and again I can use the inbuilt function shape, shape underscore circular to create a, a circular shape, but there is also the possibility to create a bar. Then with a little coding you can create whichever shape you want, combining more pins 
to create a shape. Then I also need to pass the trace, which I want to apply to this stimulus. And in this way, I create a new uh, stimulus object with complex shape. In this case, if I add to the plot function beans equal 10, I obtain an animated visualization of the stimulus object I just created. So you see this, the um, circular shape, which is indented over time into the fingertip of digit two. Now that I generated a population of afferents and I designed a stimulus, I want to apply this stimulus to the population to get the response. And to do this, I write R, which is our response, equal to A, which is our population, response to S, which is the circular stimulus that we just created. In this way, in R, I will have a response object which contains a spike train for each afferent in the population. I can visualize this response in two ways. Here, the response over time, and here, the spatial distribution of the spikes. Again, if I add also to the plot function the parameter bean, I can also obtain the animated plot of the response. Remember that for all the function in uh, TouchSim, you can write question mark and then the name of the function to get some help and some documentation about that specific function. And also remember that with print for any objects, it can be a response object, an afferent object, a stimulus object, an afferent population object. Uh, writing print error, you can get some basic information about that object. So we got to the end of this tutorial. I hope it was everything clear. And I also really hope you will start using TouchSim for your own projects. If you have any questions, you can find my contact here. So don't hesitate to write me and enjoy the rest of the workshop and see you around. Bye.